What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Anik, I'm a classical pianist and I'm a little bit <coughs> sick. <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, say hello to my new friend. <laughs> I'm very, very happy that he's finally here because I really had troubles to find enough practicing rooms at the university here. So in this video, I wanted to talk about one of the most basic piano techniques that you will need all the time, which are trills. Chill, okay? It's just a trail. Oh my god, that's cool. Chill, it's just a trail. <laughs> I should print it on a t-shirt. I got so many requests about this topic. At first I was a little bit surprised because, you know, it's such a basic and a big topic. And I thought like there must be like tons of piano tutorials about this. I watched through some of these and I don't want to criticize anyone here directly. <laughs> and I'm not going to point out which tutorials I saw and and stuff like this. However, there were like a couple of things that really surprised me that were said or not said and shown or not shown <laughs> and uh, like in a very misleading or even a wrong way um, that I wanted to, you know. <laughs> so in this video, I just wanted to share like three main mistakes that I see all the time also in these tutorials. And I think if you avoid these mistakes then you can improve your trills like immediately if you like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell also if you would like to support me and this channel please consider supporting me on patreon you'll find the link in the description box okay so first of all let's start with the heart of the key yes the name of my channel has a meaning <laughs> for everyone who is new to this channel. <laughs> Everything that we are doing technically at the piano is physics. It's not magic, it's physics, okay? The magic comes later. <laughs> Basically, the heart of the key is a part of the key where you have most of control over the sound that you're going to create. So try to stay here in the front part of the key, also here on the black keys, and things are going to be much easier. Now, what you can see very often in the tutorials is that the people are showing the trills like somewhere in the middle part of the keyboard. But in this part of the key, there is like, it's much harder to trill and to push down the keyboard compared to here. So here you have much more control compared to Yeah, You can just try it a little bit like this. you will feel that there's a huge difference in the feel of the keys under your fingers. You can control the speed much better and you can control the dynamic and everything around it. You know, a trill is not just a bunch of notes that you try to play as fast as possible. It's, it's still music and you have to gain as much as control as you can. The second point that I would like to talk about is my favorite topic, fingerings. So fingerings are having a huge impact on our playing and I think this topic is completely underrated. And honestly guys, you can solve so many problems just by, you know, using a good fingering. And in many of these tutorials, I see people trilling and demonstrating it with two and three. Now, I can understand it's the fingering that comes to your mind first because you have, you know, a lot of control with these two fingers and it's easier to speed up with these fingers. However, I don't think it's a good fingering for a trill, to be honest. There is a reason why two and three is not working so well together or four and five is not working so well together or three and four is not working so well together. You know, I'm opening a big, big, big topic right now and I don't want to go too deep into it because it's, it's just too much. <laughs> so I will try to explain it very briefly, uh, which is not possible. But <coughs> there are specific finger combinations that work very well, not just because these fingers are strong or whatever, but also because our brain likes this combination. So for example, one and four, this combination just feels very strange. Also when you put one and four like this together or like that, you know, so for example, when you're playing something in your left hand and you're playing something in your right hand and you're searching for a nice fingering to match both hands together and you see that you're using the first finger in your left hand and the fourth finger in your right hand, sometimes it's just not working because your brain 
does not like this combination. It's just an example. So there is a nature of our fingers. Every finger has its positive, but also its negative sides. I actually did a little video about this. You'll find it up here if you're interested. And the second finger, even though it's very strong and you have a lot of control about it and stuff like this, you know, that's all true, but it has one big disadvantage with the disadvantage which is that it tends to get stuck in the keys if you are using it too often in a row. If you try to trill it very fast, you can see how the second finger starts to get stuck here. Like... Especially in a high tempo. So if you're using two and three together, the second finger, and you can see this in all these tutorials that are using two and three, after a while, you can see that the second finger starts to stuck inside the keys and it's not moving enough anymore to get like this crisp chicken McNugget sound. I don't know why I'm talking about chicken McNuggets. So there are definitely better combinations for your fingers to trill and also for your brain. There's kind of, you know, a general rule. I'm not going to go deeper into this and there are also, of course, a lot of exceptions and stuff like this. So I will just tell you a little bit. One, three and five, these are working extremely good together. It's very balanced. So if, for example, three and five or one and three, these are like fingers that like to work together. And two and four are also liking to work together. However, all these fingerings that I just talked about, like one, three, two, four, three, five, and also two, one is a good fingering for trails. They are not always working like for any trail. You always have to look into every single trail on which keys are they and uh, where exactly on the keyboard are they because this also has an impact on the fingering that we should choose. Depending on where I have to play the trail on the keyboard, I would search for a nice fingering. So for example, if I have to play directly in front of my body and I have to use the first finger here on the white keys like this, you can see how my elbow gets into, into my body. Now, if I just switch the finger into maybe, for example, 4-2. You can see how much freedom I have with my elbow. The same counts, for example, for 3 and 5. I need the freedom here to stay relaxed and also to have control about the dynamics and the tempo and many other things. What does not work at all, and please never, never try to do this because it's just going to be super tiring for your hand and for your fingers and for your brain, is to do it with four and five. It's, 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 it's just stupid. You know, nobody would trill with four or five. It's just, you don't have enough control to do, you know, this crispy, on point trill with four and five. You know, just don't do it. And if anybody tells you to do it, don't, don't. Don't. Three and four is, you know, it's, it's the solution if there's really no other possibility. However, three and four is also not very good. The fourth finger in general is a finger that's very, very weak and it needs a lot of energy. The more you're using your fourth finger, the more you're losing energy that you could use somewhere else. And this is why I would generally try to avoid using the fourth finger too much, especially when it comes to trails, except if you're using two four to trill, because again, this combination your brain likes it and your hand likes it, so so it's it's okay, okay. <laughs> then I also saw people like trilling on black and white keys, and instead of you know using a fingering that would allow you to also play in the heart of the key, if you're using fingerings, you're like you know, <laughs> combining all the all the negative sides together, and it's just hell to trill like this. What I would not suggest is to try to play three and four on a trill like this because the fourth finger, it is already weak. And if I have to put it here, like in the middle part of the key where it is even more difficult to push down the key, it's going to be very, very hard for your hands to do this. So instead of three, four, I would use three, one much easier. So in the end, what I want to say is 
you decide how difficult your life should be <laughs> by choosing the fingerings. Especially when it comes to trills, one fingering might work for now, but in a few days or weeks or months, it somehow does not work anymore because your brain doesn't like this combination and things are changing around the trill. So you have to adjust the trills again and you always have to stay flexible when it comes to trills and be ready to change it. Always try to find fingerings that are supporting your playing and that don't cost too much energy. The energy that you're wasting there and all the thoughts that you're wasting there just to make the trill work with a bad fingering you actually need this energy for another part of the piece so don't waste all of this on a little trill where you know you can just use a good fingering playing trills is not about playing as fast as you can you know <coughs> there is always a musical intention behind every note that you're playing also behind the trills and it's always important to first understand why did the composer want the trill to be there and actually i did a video about this it's one of my first videos on this channel so check it out if you're interested and especially when it comes to trills less is more very very often so calculate how many notes you really need to make this trill work don't overplay the trill give yourself time. A slower trill can appear much faster because it's cleaner than your faster trill. Also, you know, if, if you're playing it so fast that nobody really understands anything that you're trying to express, then it was a little bit wasted, you know, all these notes, all this energy, it was all wasted. And for example, if you have a longer trill, you can change the tempo inside and go from slow to fast. <laughs> from fast to slow. These are just little tricks here. So in the end, what I want to say is when it comes to trails, always check how many notes you have to play. Except if it is like, you know, a super long trail, like in Waldstein Sonata or whatever. You don't have to put like, you know, thousands of notes inside two seconds. It's not enough. So ah, I think that was everything that I wanted to say. Okay, so this was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Don't, don't, don't be scared of trills. Don't be scared of any of the notes that you have to play. You should always try to enjoy what you're doing. In terms of trills, you have actually a lot of freedom. Like the, the composer is giving you a lot of freedom and you can decide on your own how difficult your life should be. <laughs> if you're just giving yourself too many notes, then don't like, don't be surprised if it's not working. And uh, if you're not playing in the heart of the key, then too, okay? <laughs> so I hope after this video, all of you are playing in the heart of the key again. If you would like to support me in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. You'll find the link in the description box. We'll see you guys in the next videos. Bye. Somewhere else in the piece. What's a city life? <laughs> I get my chicken McNuggets now. Okay.